This is episode 365 of Jumbo Think. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome to Jumble Think, where we interview dreamers, makers, innovators, and influencers all about their journey of turning dreams and ideas into reality. Along the way, we're going to share some tips on how you can turn your own dreams and ideas into reality, too. Our guest on today's show is Ben Milliken. More about Ben in a moment. Whether you're a new listener or a longtime fan, if you've never subscribed to Jumble Think, now's the time to do it. Head on over to wherever you listen to podcasts, search for Jumble Think, and click that subscribe button. To make it even easier, if you head on over to jumblethink.com, you'll find links to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. So head on over and subscribe to wherever you listen to podcasts. Now let's join today's conversation. Hey there, friends. Welcome to Jumble Think. My name is Michael Woodward. I am your host, We have a great conversation with Ben Milliken lined up for you in a moment. But before we dive into that, we want to thank our friends over at Floxy for sponsoring today's show. Floxy is your monthly subscription to top-notch graphic design, web development, and even video editing at a low monthly rate. Best of all, they want to give our listeners 10% off your first month. All you have to do is head on over to Floxy, F-L-O-C-K-S-Y dot com slash jumblethink to learn more. I am super excited about today's conversation. Our guest is Ben Milliken. Ben was raised on the northern beaches outside of Sydney, Australia. Before becoming an actor, Ben was an amateur boxer for 10 years. After studying the world of TV and film at On Camera Studio, he stepped into the world of acting. In 2008, Ben starred in the independent feature film Newcastle, which debuted at the 2008 Tribeca Film Festival. Ben then moved to Los Angeles to continue his pursuit of acting and began landing roles in multiple TV and film projects, including Blue Crush 2. More recently, Ben starred in Amazon's hit show, Bosch. He's also in this movie called Mighty Oaks, which we're going to be talking about today. So let's go ahead and join the conversation we had with our guest, Ben Milliken. Ben, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to chat. I I love your interesting story because there are so many different twists and turns that got you to where you are today. Uh, yeah. And I'm excited about the movie that, that we're going to be talking about, Mighty Oak, and much, much more. So thanks for being on. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Let's do this. All right. Well, I, I want to get a little bit of your backstory because the more I dig into you, the more I'm like, wow, there's a lot of depth to your experience. You were born in England and then yeah. lived in Australia and then end up in Hollywood. It, it sounds <laughs> like it's been quite the journey. Yeah, I kind of up to and fro. I, I think um, my dad's always been like that. Also, okay. um, he he kind of never could sit still. Um, if he's in the same place for longer than you know a couple of months, he starts itching to go somewhere. And I tell you, this COVID thing has been really hard on him because yeah. he can't go anywhere, and he's in Australia right now. But I, I don't know. I think <clears> – <throat> so we moved to Australia when I was two years old because my dad was kind of just done with the UK. Um, he, I think it was just more the weather than anything. We just didn't want it. <laughs> so he took a job in Sydney, Australia. Yeah. And um, I grew up there, and then growing up, you know, we – we traveled quite a bit and then um after i graduated from high school i decided that you know i was going to go and do the same but by myself on my own and i i i traveled around europe for a few months backpacked around europe for a few months had no idea what i wanted to do with my life had no idea where i was going to go i knew i wasn't going to go to like college or anything like that um yeah. And so uh, as I was traveling, I kind of had the epiphany of like, well, I'm always, you know, I'm obsessed with films. Mm. I'm obsessed with, as, as like, it's not, I've heard this thing recently about like, you know, finding your passion in life and yeah. all of that sort of stuff. And, and I think it's, it's, uh, you heard of Mark Manson, right? The, yeah. uh, the yeah. author. Mm-hmm. 
so it was something that I think really resonates with with me at this point in my life. Looking back on how I started on this on this journey, it was just like you'll all you're already doing your passion. You're 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 already doing it, and I was already doing movies. I was already doing film and television, and I was already. It was already happened, but but for me, it was just an idea or a daydream or something that I felt like, you know, was was just just a, f- a fun thing. Yeah. But so when when you say that you loved film, mm. were you do you were you a fan of movies and television, or was it more about like you loved the understanding of how it was put together and the craft of it? Like, what drew you to it? What, it was it story um, for me it was story okay. first and foremost um and then it was the complete fascination around how you can build an entire world mm. from nothing yeah and you can create like literally another time another dimension another place another wherever yeah there yeah. there there's no real limits to what can't be created. And I think that is, and, and who can be created? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I think that's what drew me to it the most is like you can create these whole different people. All you have to be able to do is imagine. Yeah. So is there a specific kind of story, a specific genre that you're drawn to? Because you've done a variety of work in Bosch, you're, one very type of character in Mighty yeah. Oaks, you're a completely different kind of character. So, yeah. you know, you, we just had Eric Roberts on it. I know, you know, Eric too, from your documentary that you worked on. Yeah. And, uh, just talked to him earlier this week for an episode going out, uh, soon. And, you know, he gets kind of cast, uh, in a lot of times as a specific character, although he's very broad and, and full in his acting style. So for you, uh, is there something that you a specific genre that you love there isn't a specific one that i could pinpoint and say that's that's my favorite um i think each film individually or each show individually sits in its own in its own world and and the ones that kind of impact me or make me think or just even simply just make me laugh for a while or Something like, but something that I deep, that I connect to are the ones that stand out for me. Yeah. I have things that I want to do, yeah, but I don't have things that necessarily I could pinpoint as my favorite genre because they all they each one I feel like reaches a different part of you. Yeah, I I know a lot of people desire to get into Hollywood, uh, and not everyone gets to do that. Not everyone gets the opportunity to act at the uh, the level that you've gotten to act in and the roles that you get to act in. So how did you get that break for you to get into acting? It was really, really interesting, actually. So I was traveling and I decided, you know what, I'm going to go home and I'm going to, I'm going to give this a shot. Um, and then I was, first of all, I need to take an acting class to see if I can actually do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, it helps a little bit to have talent. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and just, and then I just decided that I was just going to learn as much as I possibly can and, and try as hard as I can. And in its simplest form. Um, and then, uh, it's, it's so funny. My first ever job came about one of my friends in my acting class who I'm still very close friends with. And this was Um, uh, on camera studios in Sydney, right? Yes. Yes, it was. So the guy I did acting class there, his name's uh, Russell Jeffrey, still a very, very good friend of mine. Um, And he told me about this little movie that was casting um, surfers. Okay. Roles that were surf, surfer characters. Was that like Newcastle or? It was Newcastle. All right. Okay. And then so and so, I, he said you should, you should submit yourself for it and and try and audition for it. And I said, okay, I'll 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 do that. Just <laughs> I had no idea how to do anything or anything like that. And then so um, you know, I did that and I ended up auditioning for it, and um, 
I got I got one of the roles. And then it just so happened that the director was from L.A. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that movie ended up making its world premiere at Tribeca Film Festival. Always a good start, Tribeca Film Festival. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it doesn't get much better than that. I mean, no, it's it, it doesn't at all. So that's basically how I got from there to here. And I think it was just, it was, I think it was, in all honesty, it was just an, an openness to learning as much as I can all the time and trying really hard. Yeah, yeah. At, at, at doing something. So that's how that happened. Yeah. You know, you, you do Blue Crush too. There's a surfing theme going on here. There was there there was a theme. Yeah, when I was younger, that was a, that was a, that was a theme. Now, you know, obviously you're from uh, well, you're not from Australia, but you lived most of your uh, life there. Yeah, so, I consider myself Australian, though. Okay. Does that mean inherently there's like a rule that you have to surf? Because everyone I know from Australia, at least at least the eastern coast of Australia, all of yeah. them surf. All of us. Yeah. it's. I think it's all the ones that you meet over here. They all surf. Okay. I know so many people back there that live, <laughs> live where I grew up that don't surf and just have no desire to go surfing. Yeah. Um, I don't know how you can't when you grow up there, but um, I, I don't know. It's just, it's just a thing to do. It's like if you're in Texas, you play football. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just part of the culture. Yeah. Yeah. So much of acting is about storytelling. And I know that you talk about how that's important to you. Yeah. As an early actor, and and I would still say you're pretty early in your career. Uh, Mm. You know, you're not uh, someone who, you know, you're not in your 40s and have been doing this for forever. You still have a lot of years. And and I'm sure there's a lot of of space you want to grow in and, and go to. There comes a point when you're acting where you can be a little bit pickier about the roles that you take. For you, how do you filter through or decide this is a role that is me or that I want to put myself out there? Because obviously there are roles that you get. There are roles that you mm-hmm. want to get that either you mm-hmm. do or you don't. And then there are roles that that uh, you take because uh, it pays the bills or it, it, it's a good network of the right actors in the right room. So how do you yeah. filter through those decisions? I think, I mean, as you mentioned, it's all comes down to the story at the end of the day. Um, it comes down to the, it's, it's, it's all about the material. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's always about the material. And that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, it's genre specific or anything like that. If it's a compelling story and a compelling script, and the people are involved are, you know, the kinds of people that you really want to work with that we could really kind of band together and make something special. Like Mighty Oak was one of these. Yeah. Um, then that that's when it becomes a no brainer for me. Yeah. Yeah. I know that you had an opportunity to be a part of, of Bosch, which uh, I. Mm-hmm. I actually didn't know anything about till uh, about until recently for whatever reason it just kind of flew Ugh. under the radar. I don't know how it's I missed so it. It's so good. Yeah. It's so good. Uh and it's a great story. You've yeah. been able to be a part of that. What was that like? Because that had uh I looked down the roster of actors and there are a lot of yeah. like like you know career people that have been doing this for 20, 30, 40 years yeah. as a part of that. And and so for for doing that, I mean, not only do you get to be around them and learn and network and build those relationships, but the environment has to be a different level than, you know, some of the stuff where where it's just like you're getting going Completely. or trying to figure it out. So what's that like to be a part of a production like that? That was probably one of the best experiences that I've had on a television set ever. Mm. Um, you played Carter. Yeah. Yeah. And – and playing one of the bad guys it's always fun it was always fun to kind of delve into that area yeah but um that group the group that put Bosch together and make that show what it is um they're a really really special group of people um 
And, you know, being around actors like Titus Welliver on a daily basis, watching his process, seeing him work. And I mean, that's like, that's like going back to school. It's, it's, it really, really is the amount that you learn from, from that. And, and, and on top of all of that, everybody on that set, they're, they're always having fun. Mm. They're always having fun. I yeah. mean, there was, there was some times when we were, we were in, we were shooting some of these um, scenes that were set in the desert at nighttime scenes. And so we were spending all night in uh, just in the, they built this set in the desert. Um, we're spending all night there and it was like sandstorms blowing <laughs> this. Uh, it was, it was crazy. I don't think I've ever had that much dirt up my nose at <laughs> one time in my entire life. Yeah. But, but um, everybody just, all having fun, all smiles, all, and, and, you know, it's 15 hour days. It's all night long. And it's, 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 it's a grind in the wind and all of that sort of stuff. But the mood and everything is, you know, it's so much lighter because everybody's just banded together and they're like a family. Yeah. They really are. And it was, it was, it was an honor to be able to be part of it for a season. It really was. It really was. Well, as we wrap up this first segment, there's three questions we always ask. The first one being, how do you find purpose in what you do? For me, it kind of starts with me. Um, not in a selfish way, but it, it, it's, I feel like every single role and every single character that I get the opportunity to play, first of all, you know, staying grateful for it is one of the most important things. So I'm, I'm grateful to be able to have the opportunity to play every single character. And then there's always this element of growth that mm. comes for you um when you kind of dive into a character and because you're searching parts of yourself you know you're searching areas of you that that kind of exist and um finding the truth in whatever moment um so it's it's kind of i find purpose because it allows me to grow mm. on a daily basis um, and to be able to bring me to everything that I do. Yeah. What's one challenge you're currently working to overcome? COVID-19. <laughs> I mean, the quarantine is, is I got to tell you that though, it, it, this has been one of the most insane years in regards to this quarantine, one of the most insane yeah. experiences, but at the end of the day, I think it's going to be one of the best because I've been able to really look at life and establish what's truly important. And, um, so yeah, I would say that. Well, I, I know yeah. that you say, or have said that, you know, marriage, of course, is significant and, and a part of your life. But you say that mm -hmm. having your son was one of the most defining moments of your life and how it changed oh. your life. And, and you know, I think that there are elements of COVID that are just obviously not pleasant. But one of the great things out of this, I think, is that for many people, it has realigned value. What, what do you value? And, and especially with yeah. people with young families, it's given us an opportunity to slow down you know I, I have two girls and spend time with them more and yes and just really enjoy probably the things that are more significant that often get overlooked and missed and missed it says i you know it's 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 very strange and it's always like it's always a good sign that you're starting to slow down and pay attention mm -hmm. when you know something like a coca-cola commercial will make you sniffly <laughs> that i saw this coke commercial that they made for quarantine and it said something like we stopped missing the moments that were always there. Yeah. And it, it's so true. Yeah. Because every single day we have these moments that are right in front of us that are beautiful life moments. Yeah. And because we're so busy, like busy, we, we miss them. Yeah. Like for instance, one of the, one of the little, uh, Instagram uh, archive video uh, photos popped up for me yesterday mm -hmm. and it was a picture of my son taking his first steps. Wow. 
and it was four years ago yesterday. So crazy. And so it was like four years ago he walked for the first time. Yeah. Luckily, I was home for it because of my job. I'm able to be home for long periods of time then not home for it. And then I realized, had I not been home for it or had I been so busy? And then I realized I've been so busy I hadn't realized it was four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And that time has, has gone. Had, had I enjoyed every single moment or had I missed these moments that were so valuable? Yes, absolutely, because I was so busy trying to, trying to do whatever I can't even remember now. It mustn't have been that important because it wasn't defining. So that's one of the biggest things it's taught me. It's just life is right in front of us all the time. Yeah. And as we wrap up this first segment, the last question we always ask, what's the next big dream, idea, or goal that you have? I have a film, actually, that I'm working on right now that hopefully will be will be starting to shoot once we can and once this is all safe and all of this sort of stuff. But it's kind of like it's kind of like one of the roles. I've always wanted to play. Oh, cool. And it's kind of, we've kind of tailored it to, for that as, as this idea, as this, this character that I've been kind of mulling over in my head. And it was actually, the character was my, my, uh, my wife thought of him first and we were just like (laughs) ruminating on this character for such a long time. And now we have a script and now we have, you know, a, a, a full film and so my next goal and dream is to be able to bring that one to life because I, I, it's, a, it's a really, really fantastic, fantastic film. Super cool. We're going to take a break right here when we come back. We're going to talk about the movie Mighty Oak, which just came out in July. We're going to talk about the future of acting in this crazy, crazy world and much, much mm. more. We'll be right back. Hey there, it's Mike, and every day across social media channels everywhere, I see the same questions being asked. Who should design my next website? Where should I get a new logo design? Hey, I need a video editor. Who should I use? And these questions are hard to answer because every project is unique. But there is a company out there that is there to help. Their name is Floxy. Floxy offers unlimited projects by a vetted creative team for a flat monthly rate. Video editing, graphic design, copywriting, web design, and more, they can help you. And they are constantly adding new categories where they can help you in the future, too. Their project managers are U.S.-based, giving you same-day responses and 24-hour turnaround on most requests. All that with a simple, fixed monthly price. But you don't have to take my word for it. One of their clients, Florian, says this, Floxy is that missing component for my business that I wish I had always had. Dealing with freelancers on sites like Fiverr and Upwork is time-consuming and a very hit or miss. With Floxy, I get one point of contact for all my work, and they are quick to respond. Their work is high quality and on point. Overall, it is much cheaper and much better to use Floxy than anything else I've ever tried so far. So if you're ready to get the design you want, if you're ready to have the next website built that you need, or maybe that video edited, Floxy is there to help. And as a listener of JumbleThink, they're going to give you 10% off your first month. All you have to do is head on over to Floxy, F-L-O-C-K-S-Y dot com slash JumbleThink. That's Floxy.com slash JumbleThink to get 10% off your first month. And by the way, that comes with a 14-day money-back guaranteed. It's time to stop waiting for perfect design and to get your projects done. So head on over to floxy.com slash jumblethink and start getting your projects completed. Now let's return to today's conversation. We are back with Ben. Before we get rolling, you know, of course, we mentioned Mighty Oaks. Well, we are mighty, mighty oak. I always put the ass at the end and we had Rodney Hicks on earlier and he's a part of the cast there and, uh, and a really fun guy to sit down and chat with. And if there's uh, one word that I could use to describe Rodney, it would be namaste. <laughs> ah, okay. The guy is just so peaceful. <laughs> so peaceful. Like yeah. I'm just always calm around Rodney. It's, it's fascinating. 
And if you hear his story and where he came from and the things he's you had to know. overcome, you'd be like, how do you get there? How? Yeah. How? Yeah. It's, yeah. Fascinating guy. You know, so you have that. You have some other projects you're working on. What's the best way to stay up to date on all things Ben? Best way to stay up to date on all things Ben, uh, that would be to follow me on Instagram. I love Instagram. Yeah, it's it's. I've been spending way too much time on Instagram as of late. I mean, it's. I mean, the, oof, <laughs> I think I'm, I'm, I'm really becoming a sucker for memes. But um, <laughs> Instagram um, is like is like the Pinterest without focus. Like you go to Pinterest right? and you're kind of looking for something you like recipes or furniture yeah. or whatever. You go to exactly. Instagram and you're just kind of like, I don't know what I'm doing here, but hey, I'm here. Just, I'm just you just you just mindlessly scroll and then find these little things. Um Oh my gosh. Um but yeah, you can find me at ben.milliken at on uh, Instagram and then you'd be able to stay completely up to date with everything I'm doing. Let's talk a little bit about Mighty Oak. You play Let's Darby. Do that. Yes. Uh which is I think best put as comic relief in some ways. Uh <laughs> just an all around fun character. What's yeah. the premise of the movie, and what is the story being told? The the story being told it's it's a story of a band, um, and the band manager Gina and our front man Vaughn, their brother and sister, and you know it's 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 a band that's on the brink of their big break. They're about to hit it. All their dreams about to come true until on our way to our first, you know, really big, big gig, we have a car crash. Yeah. And our lead singer, Vaughn, is killed. It splits up the band. Dreams shattered, lost. You know, it's 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 done. And then we pick up again a couple years later and you find, you know, Gina, she has not recovered from the loss. No one's really recovered from this loss. Everybody's kind of gone, shrunk back into, you know, where they can. And uh, until one day they discover this, this kid, 10 years old, but he can play guitar and he can sing and he, can, and he does things just like our late frontman Vaughn and so then starts the discussion is he the reincarnation of our frontman so you know the band gets back together <laughs> we all start doing this thing again while the ongoing question uh mainly driven from Gino who's Janelle Parrish's character she's convinced that it's him mm -hmm. And then so that obviously all the things surrounding that, that they ensue, everything happens. And it's, it's 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 a really, really, really fantastic little story. It's a very, very heartwarming story. And I think what I took out of it the most was the importance of family mm -hmm. and how family isn't necessarily always the, the one that you're born, born with, but it's the one you create. Mm -hmm. Of course, the movie, I think of movies like Once, and uh, there's a bunch of them that are in this kind of music yeah. genre. Do you play an instrument in real life? I j in real life, actually, I'm a guitarist. Okay, so y yeah. that did transfer over. and Yeah. And surfing, and we didn't throw this in yet, Boxer. So when's the boxing movie coming out? Oh, ooh, that'll be uh, hopefully, hopefully one day <laughs> soon. Okay. Hopefully one day soon. I mean, that's that. I mean, when you talk about you know what dreams for the future, I'd love to do a boxing movie one day. Um, would you want it to be a biopic, or would you would you want it to be more of a uh, story about something that incorporates a boxer into it? I mean, a biopic would be dope, wouldn't it? Who would you want to play? Uh, I don't know that I could do a biopic because I don't fit any of my heroes when it comes to boxing. Okay. It would have to be something like, and then all the ones I do fit, they've been done. Like Mark Wahlberg did the fighter. Yeah, it was Mickey Ward. Yeah, and and um, so I think I don't know. I don't know. I guess it would have to be something. It would have to be a Rocky. It would have to be something like a Rocky. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. So you play guitar. I do. What kind of guitars do you have? 
Yeah, we we have an have an old school Dan Electro sitting on our wall. Oh, fun! That's sick. Yes, yeah, super fun. So super fun. You had an Instagram picture. It had a blue Dan Electro in it. Is that that's the guitar? The one. That's, that's the one. okay. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one. So we have that. I have another acoustic guitar. I've been through so many guitars, man. But yeah, my nicer guitars I left back in Australia when I when I moved over here. I do the research on this, and the thing yeah. that stood out about Mighty Oaks, with Mighty Oak, which I had, I didn't ask uh, Rodney. I, I find fascinating though was two weeks to film the whole thing. Yeah. Like, how did you pull that off? That's like not done. That is that it's. I got to tell you, everything about this movie happened really fast. Oh. Like, I got the call to to put myself on tape for it. And it was like, oh, can you put a tape down for this? Yeah, sure. Um, when's it due? Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Last minute so I, at all, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I did that like at midnight that night um, and sent it in, you know, bef- by 9 so I could get it in by 9 a.m. the next day. And then it was like an hour later. It's like, okay, you're going to San Diego. I'm like, okay, cool. When are you going? Next week. Okay. <laughs> Luckily, awesome. I'm free. I can yeah. do. That. <laughs> and then, so I went down there, and the thing that made this entire film work was as soon as we sat down around around the table to do our first table read. Yeah, I think, and I think everybody said was able to say the exact same thing. We sat down, we all looked at each other, and it was kind of like, okay, this works. This absolutely works. There was an instant bond. And I think that shows in the film, but also it showed behind the scenes and it it really, really showed when, when you're, you're trying to make an entire movie in two weeks time. Yeah. It was just easy. Yeah. I find it interesting because there are a lot of Raven Simones in it. Uh, is it Pena Vega? Is that how you say their last name? Pena Vega. Yeah. The, uh, that's Alexa and Carlos. Uh, and they've been a part of Hollywood since for a long time. For a long time, yeah. So uh, this is the little movie that I think a lot of people haven't heard about over the last couple months with the pandemic. Of course, I'm sure there are a lot of things going on about how it got released that got changed and everything like that. But it's a really great movie. So if somebody was listening right now and you were to tell them, why why should they watch? They're like, I haven't seen a commercial about this movie. I haven't seen this or that. Uh, Why should I take some time to watch it? And where can they watch it? Uh, you can you can find it on digital, um, Amazon Prime, Apple TV, um, and um, numerous other outlets. Um, but you should check this movie out because y- you're going to laugh. Mm. You may cry, but also you're going to you're going to get captivated by a story that's going to take you somewhere. It's going to make you think, and it's not going to you know, ram anything down, any message down your throat. You're just going to enjoy the ride with it too. Which is something we could use right now. It's something we could use. It's like a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. (laughs) It's like, you know, it's, it's, it's that kind of movie. It's, there are some things that, you know, one day you'll, you want to talk about. It's just, it deals with death. It deals with, with trauma. It deals with all of these things. Yet it does it in a way that makes it not so serious mm. in a way, but not to say that those things aren't serious, but those things are part of life. Yeah. And I think we so much try to avoid things that are part of life all the time um, in, in this, you know, in a desperate effort, especially right now in this desperate effort to be, to be you know, happy Mm. when you can be happy in the midst of all these things and um you know it's it's easy for someone like me to say who you know can can sit here and do what he loves for a living and all of that sort of stuff and say oh you can be happy you know in the midst of trouble and trauma and stuff like that but i'm only in a position to say that because i've gone through trauma and i've Mm. gone through so many things that that you know I don't necessarily talk about all the time um and I talk about to 
the people who are closest to me and stuff. I don't, I don't publicize things so much, but you know, I was, I've especially over the past kind of year and stuff, I've been able to come out the other side of certain things and be like, life is still beautiful regardless. Yeah. yeah. And I can still find joy in the midst of a storm. Yeah. Yeah. And um, this movie, it, it kind of does that in a roundabout way. Yeah. It, it, it deals with loss. It deals with, it deals with loss. It deals with, and then it also deals with, you know, your path as, as a human being and whatever you're setting out to do may not come around the way that you planned it. <laughs> right. Necessarily. You may have a 10 year old kid who's the front man of your band someday <laughs> and you never saw that coming. But, but it still works out the exact way it's supposed to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what's super important to realize in life. So good. And to let go of the control of, of things have to work out exactly the way I set out. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you let go of that control, amazing things happen. Yeah. I want to pivot here. We've talked a little bit, a bit about Mighty Oak. Where do you see the future for you? I've been talking to some friends that live in Hollywood, work in Hollywood. Obviously, there's some changes there. I have some friends that are now filming again in Atlanta at some studios yeah. that have opened up. How are you navigating that? Because when you're not acting, you're not getting paid. So, I mean, that's that's a hard thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it's, also, I think it's important to fill life with, with other things as well. Mm. My wife and I, we, my wife runs a, we, we, we opened a coffee shop a couple of years ago Okay. as well. Yeah. Um, and it's called the Palm Coffee Bar. Um, my wife is, is the complete brains and inspiration behind the entire place. She's, she's the smart one when it comes to this place. It's, it's, the place is phenomenal. Um, I do all the stuff that gets you dirty, like putting up shelves and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that. And she tells but, you what to do and you do it and you say, all yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because in that, I mean, you know, it's, she's, she's an absolute powerhouse of a woman. Wow. She really, really is. Oh my goodness. If there's any woman that's been one of the most inspirational in my life, it's her. Cause yeah. I, I just watch her and I'm just like, you are a, you're a force. <laughs> um, so that keeps us busy. Um, and then in regards to the future and stuff, I mean, it's, I think right now it's kind of taking every day as it comes. Yeah. Um, ultimately what the most important thing is making is, is making sure that everybody stays safe. And everybody stays healthy. You know, I believe this virus is a, it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had, we've had family members that have, that have passed away from it. Um, I have had, you know, friends of mine that have gotten it and, you know, young, healthy father of two spending 10 days in the hospital on, or, because he had got the virus and then it's, it's, there's so much we don't know right now. And there's so much that, that we're unable to know right now. And I, I think that's why for me being safe is the most important thing. So when we can get safely back to work, you know, I would love to, yeah. however that turns out and whatever the trajectory of filming and all of that sort of stuff, however it is in the future, it's going to be what it's going to be. I'm excited to see how this industry evolves mm -hmm. with all the changes that are going on in the world. I think it's, I think it's, I think ahead of us are some of the best times that we've ever seen coming up. Yeah. And I think 2020 can be seen as to a, to a lot of people as a catastrophe year, but I'm starting to see it as the year that, shook the very foundations of how we operate as a human race. Yeah. And it's changing some things that really need to change. Yeah. And I think that is a good thing ultimately down the road. 
I think it's a great place to leave this with. We're going to take a break, but when we come back, it's rapid fire questions. Oh, boy. There is a lot going on here at JumboThink, and we want to keep you in the loop of all things JumboThink. So how do you stay in touch? Well, there's two ways. Head on over to JumboThink.com where you can sign up for our email newsletter, or you can head on over to your favorite social media channel like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter and join us there. So head on over and let's connect. Now let's jump into rapid fire questions. All right, we are back with Ben Milliken. Are you ready for rapid fire questions? I am as ready as I'll ever be. As a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? An actor. No. <laughs> I wanted to be a boxer actually. Do you still box? Yeah, I do. I have a I have a gym in my house. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I wanted to be a boxer when I was a kid. What is one tip you'd give someone with a big idea or dream and they don't know where to start? Um, work hard and be nice. What's one change you'd like to see in the world? Equality. What do you want your legacy to be? Oh, my gosh. Rapid fire questions, they always get me. I want my legacy to be, I want to be the kind of person that when I'm gone, people are glad they knew. Where do you find inspiration? Everywhere. The world. People. What is one book you think every dreamer should read? Shantaram by Gregory David Roberts. For you, how do you define success? I find I define success as being able to wake up every single day and have joy in my heart about exactly where I am in my life, no matter where that is. What is one habit you find helpful in your life? Exercise. What is one thing you wish you would have known when you first started out? doesn't matter what people think. If you weren't doing what you're doing today, what do you think you'd be doing? Be a boxer. And our final rapid fire question is, what is one dream you are still wanting to fulfill in your own life? That would be, that's also a tough one because I'm so, I'm so very content with where my life is right now. I love my life so much. So it's, it's kind of like I have goals, but I think one dream, I mean, we'll go lofty. I'd love to play a superhero one day. It's awesome. I love let's it. Go, let's go there. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> As we wrap up, we always like to leave our guests to have a final thought. To all of us listening, what would you like to say as we wrap up? As we wrap up, I think, you know, we touched on it a couple times uh, this year, this during this interview, and this year is, I think, one of the most important years in recent history that we will ever have as human beings on planet Earth. I think now it's more important than ever to be using our voices to build people up. Mm-hmm. And to lift people up, there's so much anger and hatred in the world. There has never been a more important time in the world for love mm. and for spreading love and to building people up and for lifting people up. Ben, it's been a lot of fun to have you on. I can't wait to, to see your career to, to continue to grow. And I think your future is bright. So I'm excited to see Thank where you, it takes you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I had a lot of fun today. This was good. Anytime I can come back, just let me know. I'll be back. Definitely. Let's do it. Once again, we want to thank Ben Milliken for being on the show with us today. Make sure to go check out Mighty Oak and everything else he's working on. The links to the movie and to his Instagram and much more are in the episode notes. I also want to thank you for tuning into today's show. I hope it's encouraged you. Sometimes... The unexpected dream is the dream that actually is the one we should chase. Just like in Ben's life, you could hear how he started out on one path to be a boxer. And somewhere along the line, he ended up becoming an actor, finding fulfillment and joy in doing that and unlocking new dreams he didn't even know he had. So sometimes we all could learn that lesson, not to hold on to the dreams as we'd want them, but be open to the possibilities. You never know when that dream's going to blossom, grow, change, evolve, or be something that was unexpected and yet bring joy and fulfillment to your life. Thanks again for tuning in to Jumble Think. Now it's your turn to get out there, dream big, and change the world around you. Sur les côtés. Vous êtes une autre personne. Les
mères de famille, les enfants, peuvent également prendre un moment revitalisant. Dans quelques mois, lorsque vous aurez bien saisi la technique et que vous serez maître de votre corps, vous pourrez vous décontracter même en travaillant.